All right, so uh, we're going to talk about curves real quick. I've got a dynameshed sphere here that I stretched out a little bit, and I'm going to be using the mask curve brush. Got perspective turned off, so I get a consistent symmetrical result on both sides of the geometry. I'm going to mask a little section off, and then we'll uh, we'll do this thing here. Uh, we looked at in the last video or a couple videos back to uh, do an edge loop on the mask border. And you can see it's kind of, because this is fairly low res, like this is real jumpy and we don't really want it to be all bumpy like this. So I'm going to come over to deformations and we'll do polish by groups. And you can see that's looking better. I think we can take a look at the result there. Still a little wobbly. So let's just do this a few more times. Get it nice and smooth looking. That's probably good enough. So now what we have is a boundary between polygroups. So we can go to the stroke menu, which I'm just gonna put over here so we have it uh, easily accessible. We don't need the brush menu for now. We'll go to stroke. I'm gonna expand this out over here. And I'm gonna look at the curve Sorry, uh, curve functions. Yeah, curve functions. So I'll just show you like the, the very simplest version of this is I'm going to just make a border. I'm gonna turn off polygroups, increase edges, and we're gonna hit frame mesh. And what you can see is there's this white line now around that open boundary in the geo. That white line will, will persist unless I come over to delete here. If I wanna get rid of it, it's not a big deal. I can just hit delete. So I'm gonna add this back in. And one of the cool things that you can do with this curve now is if a brush is set up to use curves, which you can basically with the curve on, you just turn curve mode on with the brush selected. It's a little weird that it's here and not in the brush menu, but that's just how it is. What we can do here is I think I got like a tubes maybe. That would be the easiest one. I might just have to look for it for a second here. All right, so I'm going to tap C because it starts with the curve. You can see there's a few curves here and they are all set up to work with the curve brush. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to curve tube. And then the thing that, there's a few things about this that are kind of cool. I am going to control the diameter of my tube with my brush radius. So if I want it to be smaller, I can make my brush radius smaller. I want it to be bigger, I can make it bigger. And it looks like I'm, I'm probably gonna need to keep it a little bit small just because of what's going on here with the, the radius on this guy. And you can see with the curve to brush selected, I now have my curve mode active. You can recreate the behavior that we were getting with our masking where we were generating geometry from that with this process here. But we're not limited to, to tubes here although you certainly could totally just use this tube. Anything that's set up to, to have a repetitive insert mesh, or insert multi-mesh behavior. So I can go to chain. If I click on this, we should get chains all the way around. So you can imagine how we might have to go in and build one, how difficult it would be to, to do this manually and how like stupid easy it is to do with a little bit of masking and the right brush. So this is a really nice way to add like trim around a collar or a zippers or any, any kind of clothing stuff. This is a, a really, really convenient way. You can also, for the record, so you can see when I'm getting close to it, it's, it's highlighting. If I want to be like, okay, Curve, you've done your job, just click on the mesh and it'll go away. But what I can also do here is I can, these brushes all have the ability to draw their own custom curves. And then you can kind of drag them around a little bit. Like you see, I get that red line, that's going to allow me to add more. And if I don't have a red line, then well, that's interesting. There we are. That's kind of what I was looking for. You can kind of drag on surface, but it's not that great at figuring out like where it's supposed to be. Like once you start messing with it, it's not going to necessarily stick to the surface. So uh, just a thing to be aware of. For what we're doing here, I just back up a little bit, go back to our curved tube. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. I have hopped off of my, I think I had control S, which is a screenshot, it's a little bit confusing. All right, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and we'll commit it by clicking off the surface. And now I'm going to, it's basically just an insert mesh brush so I can split unmasked points. 
and I get my own thing here. So this is where it can be very nice to come over and do a, a rebuild with zebra measure. Because this is kind of dense and you can see it's a little bit warbly. So I could also do a uh, polish by features, which might preserve some of those corners while smoothing this stuff out. You can also just uh, mask off the areas that you don't want to mess with, which is, whoops, I think I just dynameshed it. So because this is a dynamesh and I applied this to this, it inherited the dynamesh status. If you get too aggressive with the polishing, you might begin to lose volume in your tube. So just a thing to be aware of, but anyway, so we've got this guy there and I'm going to go ahead and we'll go to Z remesher. That's looking a little bit better. And I don't really know what the right polygon count is going to be. So I'm just going to hit half and like whatever it is, it's going to Z remesh it with half as much uh, information. So we're just going to continually go, uh, hopefully fewer and fewer, although it might just be parked at 5k. I don't actually know how that works. So we're at 3,200. Let me try it again. Should be 1600, but I doubt it's going to be 1600. Yeah, it's just, it's sort of stuck there. I'm going to hit solo here. Really, really easy to, I'm not that worried about the, I don't know what these are, the latitudinal ones. I'm, I just want to kind of have a, a, a flat plane that I can put a crease on. So I'm going to get rid of some of these guys and we'll leave a couple of those over there like that maybe. And then I'm going to do a crease. We'll do an edge loop complete there, 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 and there. And now I'm going to set my crease level to being a little bit lower so we can actually see the result. So that's a, a super quick and easy way to get like a whatever, you know, some any kind of trim, any kind of uh, panel work that's it needs to conform to a to an organic surface you can you can just knock that out like super fast and we're not stuck here right like if i want let me turn my symmetry on oh it's going the wrong direction i guess i should rotate everything so this is kind of a good trick too i probably should break this out into its own video but um if you like i want to rotate both of this both these sub tools they're both visible if i just click this little button here it'll allow me to to go ahead and do that, but I'm not centered. So let's see, go ahead and center that and we can rotate. And so now if I go to Q, uh, my line of symmetry is in the correct spot for the geo and I can just kind of come in and because it is low poly, it's like super easy to whatever. Maybe I want to want to just make some adjustments here and change the shape a bit, uh, duplicate it, make it bigger, whatever, right? There's all kinds of things. From this point on, but anyway, so that's a a, a nice uh, a, a nice trick for for adding geometry to other geometry using uh, polygroups and masking and the curve functions.